Okay, this is a very quick introduction into InDesign and how to set up some folio pages. So the first thing we're going to do is open it up and go create new and we're going to select our page size settings. So I'm going to click on print and dictate that we're going to go for A3. You can change the orientation to landscape or portrait. I'm going to um, select three pages here, click off facing pages. This is only if you're creating a booklet. And then I'm going to go create. You should come up with a screen that looks like this. So up here, if it's not looking similar to this one, you can select different setups. I like to click on to the advanced one. And here are some really good menus that we'll use quite a lot. The first one is pages. So I have my three pages of my folio so far. I can also add pages down here or I can trash pages as well. Um, you can see that my ruler is in view. If you go up to view, you've got hide rulers or show rulers. It's important that you can see them. You can click on the horizontal ruler and create some own guidelines. This is so you can make sure your images and your texts are aligned and also from the vertical. So you just click and drag them over and place them. The first thing we're going to do is to create a title block that's going to be the same across the first three pages. And it's going to say something like research. So as you can see on my pages, if I hover over, it says a master applied to each of them. So that's meaning that whatever is up here on this a master is going to come um, and be applied to each of these pages. So that's helpful when we want a title. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the type tool, click and drag to create a text box and put my title in there. And I'm going to call it research. And at the top, I'm just going to edit my font and my size, making sure that you're selecting a font that's really legible. It's not too fancy for a title and I can um, make my paragraph aligned at the top as well. Okay, so I've got my title. It's pretty simple, just the words. So now I'm going to put a colored box behind it. So I can do that with this shape tool. If I click and hold, you've got some different options of shapes here. I'm gonna click the rectangle and using this margin, um, as a guide, I'm going to click and drag and create a rectangle. So down here, these two little squares tell me what color the stroke will be and what color the fill will be. So if I click this arrow, I can switch it over. And if I double click on the fill of the stroke, a color picker will come up and I'm going to select a different color something that's um, quite soft. You don't want your title block to detract from your imagery and your work. And click OK. And for my stroke, I'm going to double click and I'm actually going to make my stroke black and click OK. So that's great, but now I can't see my type. So when we want to select or move anything in InDesign, we always use the black arrow. So I'm going to click onto the black arrow and I'm going to arrange this behind my type. Easiest way is to right click, arrange, send to back. Okay, so my type now is a little bit too high. So I'm going to click on it and just use my arrows to center that. It's also could afford to be a bit bigger in font size. Uh -huh. And my black stroke around my box, it really isn't um, kind of consistent with the width of the stroke of the title there. So what I'm going to do is go over to stroke and I'm just going to make that a bit more dominant. Three points looks good. <laughs> Okay, so if I'm back to pages, now that I have my title on my A master, that is applied to page one, page two, and page three. So super consistent. 
If I wanted to do a different title for the next phase of my folio, like idea generation, I would click an extra page. So number four and a master's already been applied, which I don't want. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to select this little icon and scroll down to new master. And now it's master B. Okay. So here's master B and it's blank. So I'm going to click and drag that onto page four. And really I want to do exactly the same thing, but I just want to change research to something like idea generation. So to do that, I'm just going to copy, select everything that's on page A, control C, click on to B master, and I'm going to go edit, paste in place, puts it exactly where I copied it from. And I'm going to change this word to idea generation. Okay, so let's see page four now has idea generation. Page one, page two, page three all have research. So my folio is starting to become set up. Okay, now we want to place some images and some annotations. So what we're going to find in layout is a tool called Create Guides. And this enables you to create a grid on your page. So you can select the number of rows that you might want, depending on how many images. You can select the number of columns that you might want as well. So what I'm going to do to start with, because my images are different sizes, I'm going to just start with a column down the middle. So and I'm going to make sure I fit my guides to my margins. And I'm going to select OK. Now the gutter size is that gap in between the columns. So you can also set that. Um, I'll just keep it at five. OK. All right, now let's place some images. So we're going to go to File, Place, and I'm going to go to my um, Images folder. This is where all of my images have been saved. And I'm going to select, let's just start with, um, let's just start with four, let's just start with four images and click Open. Okay, so they'll be all under the cursor. So it's important at this page not to just click because um, what will happen is your image will be um, placed in the original size that it was saved at. So I just go control Z to undo. What I'd like you to do is click, hold and drag. So you can dictate the size of the image you want to place. Um, I'm just going to use my guide there and my margin to make sure I'm keeping to the two columns that I set. One, two, three, four. Now this one's skinnier, so I'm just going to estimate halfway through. And what I could actually do is create another guideline there to make sure that's perfectly halfway if I wanted to. Um, well, let's place this one here. So I'm just using my black arrow to move them. And what we need to leave space for is some annotation. So you can type your annotations or you can print your page like this and handwrite it. So if we were to type it, we would click on the type tool. I would click, hold and drag to create a text box. And for this demonstration, I'm going to fill with placeholder text. So this is just make believe text, just so you can see what it might look like. Okay, so I've got an image with an annotation here. Let's do that one again. I might just stagger this so I can create a text box here. And this is where my annotation would go. Okay. Um, and let's do an annotation for this image, just opposite. Great. We can have a annotation just here for that long rectangle. Now our annotations are telling me why you have included this image in your research, how it's inspiring to you. 
I'm just going to place another image here because there's a bit of a gap. So I'm going to go File Place. I'm going to find um, one of my images that's kind of small and square. There we go. So your annotations, why it's inspiring to you. And you're also going to identify a design element or principle as well. Okay, I'll put that one there and a little annotation space. Okay, so I have my page. If I um, scroll to this little icon, click and hold and I go preview. So assuming these are all my own words and I've included my URL link, then I have a page for my research. You can see that everything is beautifully aligned. It's really easy to read and follow. And my font size is, it really shouldn't be more than 10 or 12 because my focus must be on these images, okay? So the images are the key. So I'm gonna go File, Save As, and at this point I will call it um, Design Folio, whoops, I'll call it Design Folio Research underscore your name. Okay, and you would put this, let's see, in your unit one outcome two um, final presentation folder and click save. Okay, that's it.